So there you are. That's a fairly quick corned beef mozzarella balls made. And we've got this spicy mustard aioli. But I tell you, this mustard elevates this way up there. Hi everyone, welcome to Backyard Chef. Farm Rick. Today we're doing party finger food at its best. We're making corned beef and mozzarella bites. And we'll probably knock up a little bit of a sauce as well. A spicy cheats aioli or something like that. Something to dip it in. It's a very straightforward recipe. Okay, I've already boiled some potatoes. Now the potatoes are boiled in the usual way. Just water a little bit of salt until they are fork tender. And then what I've done, I've drained them and I've put them back on the flame to dry out. For this type of mashed potato, you can season it. Not a problem, a little bit of salt and pepper. So we'll just put a little bit of salt in there. We don't want to go too much. Pepper, that's a good option. A little bit of black pepper in there. No butter or milk, cream, sour cream, anything. They have to be mashed dry. So it might be a little bit of work, but they have to be mashed dry. So just give them a little mashing. And the reason for being mashed dry, they're going to be mixed with our corned beef as a filler. Now, if they were all soggy or carried butter or milk or anything like that, it would make our corned beef balls loose and they would just explode in the pan. They could explode anyway, but you have more of a chance if you're using a wet mix. So that is our dry mix. Now you have to make sure that your mix is cold. This is not quite cool enough yet, but we're going to take our corned beef, can of corned beef, or in my case, I'm using homemade. And there's a link up here now if you want to make corned beef the same as a can, tinned corned beef. Okay, so all we need to do is break our corned beef up. Mine's a bit firmer because obviously it's homemade. So break up your corned beef. Okay, and then what you do, you take your potato. Now I've only got a couple of potatoes here. You can use as much potato as you so require. This is a filler to stretch it out. Because obviously a tin of corned beef, you've only got 300 and... 40 grams or whatever it is. So this is a filler. Now, mix it all in with your corned beef and it will mix in there. So just give it a good mix in. The idea is not to overpower the filling um, with mashed potato, but get enough mashed potato completely mixed in so you can't really see it when you come to eat it. And then that way, it looks like you've got this fantastic corned beef ball. <laughs> Cheats way of actually making it spin out a little bit longer. Okay, we know it's got mashed potato in there. But you know, when it's all breaded up and you're eating it with your sauce, it'll be corned beef. <laughs> So this next stage for us then, you have to decide how big you want your corned beef balls. And that is all determined by how big you've cut your mozzarella cheese. So what you're going to do, you're going to roll out a ball like that. You're going to do that. You're going to put the cheese in there. And you're going to fold that all back around there like that. And inside there is our cheese. I'll just put it on a tray. Nice and steady on a tray. Just carry on with all your mozzarella corned beef. It's 
So what you're trying to do is make sure the cheese is completely encased in there. Now what I will say is this is open to as much seasoning as you like. You can season this beef, this corned beef and mashed potato with any flavorings you like. You can even season the breadcrumbs or the flour. Tailor the snack to suit yourselves. There's our wonderful corned beef balls and basically we're going to drop the corned beef balls in the flour, roll them in the flour, in the egg, in the breadcrumbs and then we might go egg breadcrumbs again for a double dip. So it's as simple as that. So that in there, roll it round in the flour, shake off the excess nice and gently in the egg. So, in there like that, out of there, in the breadcrumbs. A nice rolling on there. So that goes back in the egg. We're going to have to double dip that. Back in the breadcrumbs. and just roll it round in the breadcrumbs. Out onto a tray. Okay, there is our balls <laughs> ready for frying. Okay, we're going to knock up a very, very quick aioli sauce, actually. Obviously, aioli's got garlic in. So let's just whiz up some garlic. Just give it a really good mashing. that in our meal. About a teaspoon of lemon juice. Let's have that mixed in. Now we're doing this quickly now because I'm just going to stuff this in the fridge whilst we fry our corned beef um, mozzarella balls. Is any more lemon juice in there? Let's have that freshness half a teaspoon of smoked paprika now cayenne pepper use that caution I want a little bit in there just to give it that spicy kick I want some black pepper don't use salt I want about a tablespoon of honey That'll do. 
Dijon mustard. For something like this, you would go a tablespoon. I'm going to go a good half. Only because the Dijon mustard is usually too sour. And we are going to go for whole grain mustard. Now, this we do want about a tablespoon. Because we're going to make a spicy mustard aioli dip. Mix. There we go. Our dip made. Let's get frying. Okay, get a pan on and start heating your oil up. And if you had a thermometer, 180 degrees, somewhere like that. In with your corned beef balls. Now don't chuck them in, obviously. Probably going to get about six or seven in here at one go, I think. Nice little stir on there. Nice little stir because these things are a little bit heavy and they are sinking to the bottom, obviously. And nice and gentle, we're looking for a golden hue all the way around. So when you've got them golden brown, get them out. Oh, I split one there, look. Are we worried? No, we're not. Try something different, I think. I'm just wondering if they're too hot to the bottom of the pan. Yeah, I think it's too hot to the bottom of the pan. So if you have a little rack or something like that in there, look, I think that works better. You know, the first one that went in exploded in there you know but you know there's nothing wrong with it we still eat it but you know i'm just going to show you doing something like this it will explode this has got only a tiny crack in and these others don't have anything i think it's a bit hit and miss actually anyway come on let's get it served up just a little bit of snack food going on here come on I'm going to get one of these split ones actually. Oh, looky in here. Look at this mozzarella. Come on. <laughs> that is nuts. Oh, come on. That is absolutely nuts. Come on in here. Some of that mayo. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow impressed crunchy out crunchy outside impressed crunchy outside very crunchy actually you got that stringy cheese in there what does it taste like it tastes like corned beef with mozzarella in but I'll tell you this Mustard elevates this way up there. This aioli mustard sauce is fantastic. Oh, well, there you are. That is corned beef mozzarella bites made. And I can tell you, only a percentage of mine are absolutely perfect. The rest have got little, little splits in. But not to worry, the first ones that went in exploded. That is incredible. If you like corned beef, you like mozzarella cheese, if you like anything fried and breaded, that little bit of crunch, excellent. Excellent. But you know, be careful, they do explode. Mine exploded as you saw on the first. The rest of them are fine. There's not, not a mark on any of these. They're fine. A couple of little cracks in. Not to worry. This aioli mustard sauce is unbelievable it is very very good very tasty 
that is worth making that's worth making to have with anything else as a dip so there you are that's a fairly quick corned beef mozzarella balls made and we've got this spicy mustard aioli that is a fantastic dip that tastes like corned beef with mozzarella cheese in deep fried very nice this elevates that oh if you like what we're doing don't forget a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel ring that bell catch you in the next video and in we go look at that oh it's a bit warm this one oh come on <laughs> Oh, that's ridiculous. I want to break that off. Oh, it's still coming out. Oh, in there. Oh, tear and share. Oh.